Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we explored a bit of the new Albion. I was looking for the most serene mausoleum to deliver my firkins of red honey, but unfortunately there weren't any prospects at London to tell me where that might be now that it's moved. So I just started exploring and found the Royal Society, which I had not been to before. I've done just a couple things here. At the end of the last episode, talked to Mr. Benagerie and visited the Celestial Expi Exhibition. Now let's introduce ourselves to the Society. The words Nullius in Verba are written across the stonework above the great bronzewood doors. A renewed majesty has granted these grounds to the finest minds in Albion to work here. Their purview is to invent, to hypothesize, to discover, and most crucially, to watch the stars. Hmm, I wonder if they have any inside information for me on the stars. What's been happening to them? Introduce yourself at Airy House. The Royal Society welcomes careful captains. An offer of work. The It's a little bit hard to pronounce this. The mellifluous, mellifluous president greets you. He directs your attention to the new marble on the floors, to the cheerful portraits of distinguished Royal Society members lining the hallway, and finally to the very large portrait of himself in his plush library. We do like captains here at the Royal S. We need our space, and frankly, our comforts to think. But it is you, brave souls, who do the real legwork. Extremely educational. If not, our gardens are extremely fine, as is our conversation and the port. So I can wander the gardens, visit the president. Oh, write a port report. Let's do that. The Royal Society hums with activity. The preparations for a new wing of Airy House are in motion. The mellifluous president is convening another committee to continue the renovations of the gardens. The astronomers are excited about a star of burnished amber seen far to the east. The Rochester Club, regrettably, continues at high speeds. Also got to remind myself that I want to keep these port reports because I need five to continue the... Um, the, I always forget their name, the something signalman. Yeah, they need five port reports to continue their quest. They're not actually on my ship right now, so I can't look here. Gave them leave at London. Let's visit the president. He intimated there might be work for industrious skyfarers. Hello, captain. Do come in. Come in. The mellifluous president steeples his fingers. On his desk, metal suns suspended from silver frames clack in the breeze. Now, are you here about work? Or do you consider the term vulgar as well? I send reports back to London, periodically, but we can't be everywhere. So much to do, so little time. Places of particular solar activity will do nicely. Wait, you consider the term work vulgar? Okay. Not really sure how to take that. Acquire an invitation to Perdurance. Takes four sky stories. Well, I have 60, so why the heck not? A small stack of invitations to the Half-Life Mask are impaled on a paper spike on his desk. He won't say why he has them, but he will part with one if you can tell him something about the sky he doesn't know. Good lord, really? Well, well. He hands over one of the invitations. The card is elegantly embossed, inscribed with a gold liquid script. The puncture mark from his paper spike seems like an appalling blemish. Oh my god, I have ten invitations to Bert Durance. I did not realize I had that many. Uh, oh, okay, so this is what they might be interested in. They're interested in information, a report report specifically from the circus. The Clockwork Sun, and the House of Rods and Chains. Okay, so basically a place in the Reach, a place in Albion, and a place in Eleutheria. Bid him goodbye. Cheerio! Let's wander the gardens. Oh, this 
requires iron. Um, the Royal Society have left their gardens to run wild, though an attempt was made at some point to tame them. I thought these were going to be idyllic, peaceful gardens, but it looks like I might get eaten by a plant. Let's do it. Nice. Into the green. The gardens were an early attempt by the society to stamp their mark upon the sky. More interesting avenues for scientific exploration quickly presented themselves, however, and the gardens were left to run wild, half tamed. The overgrown gardens are beautiful but hazardous to the casual walker. You, however, are a veteran rambler. The. The ha ha? When the ha ha is no obstacle to your fearless tread, the folly is neither to deceive nor to virtue from your path, and you can tell from a mile off the bog is a bad idea. You find yourself in a pleasant faux classical temple dedicated to the suns. Someone has left something behind. Time has passed while you've idled in the gardens. Oh, cache of curiosities. A miniature folding bureau. The mahogany has been recently polished. The box reeks of money. An unlicensed chart. Your navigator wrenches open a miniature drawer and gasps. Captain! He demands your immediate attention. A map, glossy and richly painted, has been printed in the bottom. The navigator traces some very unusual routes marked on it with a shaking finger. That's it for the airy. There's a lot more to check out, though. Let's go to Nell's Tower. The Royal Society's observatory is named for King Charles' canniest mistress. Nell's Tower is the jewel in the Society's crown. Arriving in Nell's Tower. A sign on the door in neat copper plate reads, Nell's Tower closed for the 13th annual airy dinner. Leave urgent business at doorstep. There's a polite cough at your shoulder. Turning, you see a tall man with a beard like a nest of vipers. The supercilious bursar introduces himself. I came to round up stragglers. But, as a captain, you're of rank sufficient to attend the dinner, if you wish to attend. Yeah, let's attend the 13th annual airy dinner. There will be port, captain. Three wise astronomers. The dinner is held in the mahogany and marble imperial dining room of Airy House. Every piece of the dinner service is mismatched, and both the furniture and the personages in the room are pleasantly rumpled. The supercilious bursar brings you to the high table, where the three senior astronomers of Nell's Tower are holding court. You're introduced to the senatorial professor, the chair for the effulgent sciences, and the lecturer for imperial affairs as the first course is served. I can dine on the game pie, guzzle the port, or eavesdrop. Hmm, so the port will reduce terror, dining will grant supplies. Let's eavesdrop, that sounds more interesting. You can always pick at the vegetables. The supercilious bursar keeps everyone's port glasses well topped up, as a conversation descends into fractious bickering. The disagreement centers around the orientation of the society's great telescope. The lecturer wishes its gaze outwards beyond the borders of Albion, while the chair desires it turned on Albion's territories. The first course ends with a great smacking of lips and a general feeling of goodwill towards the chef. Gained a sky story. Second course. The supercilious bursar passes the dish of buttered potatoes with an oily smile. The conversation continues, lubricated by Herculean quantities of port. Buttered potatoes, Roast squirmings and sautéed hybrid mushrooms are devoured in between rhetorical thrusts. I don't, I don't like that. Roast squirmings. Ugh. So, which of the three do I want to talk to? Imperial affairs, effulgent sciences, senatorial professor. Let's read read these descriptions. So for the lecturer in Imperial Affairs, she's rationing her port with water and visibly holding her tongue. Chair for the Effulgent Sciences. Her eyes are wild. She has savaged the potatoes. Her conversation rambles, but her language is poetry. And the Senatorial Professor. 
he affords sly smiles from under his blindfold. Between slurpings of mushroom, he appears to enjoy playing the devil's advocate. I hate it when people play the devil's advocate. Fuck them, I don't want to talk to them. Hmm. Let's talk to the chair for the effulgent sciences. They sound intriguing. A scattering of discourse. She interrupts you repeatedly to make this point or that. At first, these feel like random interjections, but by the end, she's refuting points you made at the start of the course and anticipating your jokes with wild-eyed delight. I've always been in love with the heavens, is all the biography you get from her, however. The second course ends with the lecturer in Imperial Affairs telling a rather ribald joke and a hearty toast to the continued health of all present. The third course. Sherbet's produced... Uh, is that Sherbet or Sherbert? I've always thought it's pronounced Sherbet, but I never actually looked it up. Sherbet's produced in Linden's sweet shops. Sponge cake from the Admiral Nelson on board Prosper. Clotted cream and actual strawberries grown in the garden. More port. The conversation grows looser. The story is more risque. The supercilious bursar leans in conspiratorially. I arrange these dinners to promote unity, you understand? And of course, for the good memory of our previous president, who nobly argued for the introduction of the society to the wilderness and convinced Her Majesty of our utility. He toasts the large portrait of Airy that dominates the room. Okay, the lecturer, her cheeks are flushed, her glass has been refilled. The chair for the effulgent sciences, she's drawing something on the napkin. And the professor, he has procured brandy from somewhere, his port is shamefully neglected. Once again, the chair for the effulgent sciences, what are you drawing? A question of precedent. Are those limbs? Rays? She smiles widely. Something I saw. Last time I was permitted to use our great scope. Honestly, what's the point if we have to ask permission every time we move it? Did Isaac Newton need King Charlie's permission to discover gravity? The third course comes to a close with a great groaning and heartfelt but, fault, but false protestations that one couldn't possibly manage cheese and biscuits after all this. The supercilious bursar leans in as the plates are cleared away. Before we adjourn, there is the question of patronage to consider. All eyes are on you. A hush falls over the table. The three faces of the astronomers are turned to you. The supercilious bursar continues as though nothing has changed. Our telescope is operated only by the will of the government. We're not allowed to move the telescope without permission. A bold skyfarer such as yourself might obtain such permission. Or at least an official-looking document that could be conceivably construed as permission. Our astronomers would be very much interested in patronizing you. You bring them a permit, they can advance their researches. In exchange, they'll teach you what they know. Ah. So the government is basically making it hard for them to do their jobs with all their shitty bureaucracy and needing permission for every little thing. Okay, so I need to choose who I want to be my patron. Definitely the chair for the effulgent sciences. The wild-eyed astronomer specializing in the habits of the stars will be your patron. Yeah, they seem like the most likely to actually know something real about the stars. An alarming scholar. She lets out a high laugh, wild as the shrieks of the bat-winged curators that ride the celestial winds. I'll show you such things, Captain. Come to the tower, do, and make sure you have a permit. Queen's astronomers. Here, astronomers turn the vast steel telescope to the heavens and report on the movement of the stars. London is keenly invested in their findings. Oh, we can do a lot. Choose a patron, renounce your patronage. Oh, you could choose somebody else if you wanted to. Let's. 
Wait. Wait. Is... Huh? Observe the clockwork sun unlocked when patronized by is... Your patron is a lecturer in imperial affairs, but it's not? That's not who I chose? What? This is the one for me. What is... I don't understand. I already chose a patron? You can only have one patron at a time. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've already have a patron. Okay, that's really odd. I guess I'll ignore that first option, or maybe I should just do it? Let's do the one for us. Deliver the chair in the effulgent sciences. Permission to move the telescope. You have paperwork from London that could plausibly justify her continuing her researches into distant stars. Man, I only have four ministry stamp permits in total. The ascent to the telescope is arduous and up an improbable number of winding stone stairs. At the top waits the telescope, gargantuan and gleaming as a dragon slumbering in its lair. The chair pulls the machinery to open the dome to the heavens with visible glee. For a few moments she stands alone, looking up, bathed in distant starlight. And then she's at the telescope, lowering the great barrel until the lens is at her eye. Read your patron's latest reports. Over there, the bursar says through a mouthful of muffin, on the desk, for your perusal. A small measure of progress was achieved. I fixed the telescope firmly on the horizon, as I had indicated previous. Much must be left to speculation, but I believe there are commonalities with my observances at Port Avon. A different intent, for sure, but one must wonder... For how long have our microscopic activities been under the lens of minds immeasurably superior to our own? Wait, so there's some similarity between the Avid Horizon and Port Avon? And if I read the latest report, it'll be the same one, right? Yes. And you have to wait a bit of time before we can deliver another one? Yes. Should I observe the clockwork sun? Even though this isn't actually my patron? I mean, sure, okay. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. London authorizes and encourages this use of the telescope. The ministry has stamped permits for this particular usage up to the next century, the bursar informs you. The sun's light is thin and nauseous flecking the horizon with a poisonous white gold light. Looking closer, you can see the machinery around the sun is still. Half lies in darkness, and the other in a sad semi-twilight. Gain one terror. Okay, that's Nell's Tower done. Let's check out the Rochester Club. A cozy country house bolted onto the side of the society's glass houses and overgrown lawns. This is the meeting place of the infamous Rochester Racing Club. The clubhouse. Brandy glasses gleam on the shelves. Polished brass fixtures abound. A fire roars in the hearth. Members sit in comfortable armchairs comparing war stories. Parts salvaged from broken trains adorn the walls. Oh, I can give my driver shore leave here. They're eager to get to the races. The driver will leave your engine. So long as they are not out racing, you can pick them up again. Well, there's no way I'm getting rid of them, because they give me plus ten iron. Inquire about joining the Rochester Club. Compete in a Rochester race. Hmm. I'm just imagining the race being an actual thing that I actually have to uh the pilot my ship through that doesn't just happen in like text and with roles and whatnot that's probably not the case though i don't think they really could do that probably not let's inquire about joining i don't know if i want to but let's see the dismal debutante or debutante debutante curls her lip a boisterous harridan cackles the current Lord Rochester laughs gamely before abruptly stopping. Uh, oh, you were serious. 
He coughs to conceal his embarrassment. Well, should you really wish to join our merry company, you'll have to prove yourself a proper racer. The careless deviless in her smoked velvet jacket appraises you carefully. You'll need to prove your mettle, my dear. Win one of our races, and we'll be happy to admit you. Okay. Sure, let's compete. The thundering terror of the sunless skies, the Rochester races are the competitive sport of choice at the Royal Society. Lord Rochester claps you on the back. Good sport, that. The rules are simple. Get to the destination port and back here in 30 days. Then you can call yourself a true Rochester racer. Savvy? He calls for order in the club room and gathers the other racers around. A quick toast is raised to your health, and then it's on with the race. Okay. Reach the floating parliament and return to the Rochester Club within 30 days. Oh, that's easy. That's super easy. I mean, that's in this region. And I think the floating parliament, if I remember right, is one of the prospects that I could get, and I think is down here. It's like south from London, so it's got to be under the relay, if I remember right. I don't think I took... No, I didn't take that prospect. Check out Portsmouth House. The workshops under the area are known collectively as Portsmouth House. The glass and brick factories are staffed by harassed inventors and engineers working constantly to produce the next advancement in adventuring equipment. Oh, they might have something good for me to get then. The Portsmouth Arsenal, smoke and soot, glass and steel. The ring of hammers on metal, the swearing of engineers, the acrid scent of sweat. Here in the bowels of Portsmouth House, the scientists of the Royal Society work to produce experimental designs for daring captains. Oh, this is I, there's something I can do with my ambition here, right? I thought there was some sort of a quest thing to do here. A team of engineers led by the energetic mechanic are excited to get to work on whatever you'll pay them for. Here, you can convert goods to experimental modifications which can be exchanged for unique equipment. Oh, this sounds amazing. Um, I guess I should do my ambition first. Inquire after the plucky Baroness's commission. And deliver the trunk of research material and helpful suggestions she provided. Actually, it's not research material, that's trunk of research, material, and helpful suggestions. Scientific Endeavor. This is a singularly challenging commission. The energetic mechanic picks through the contents of the trunk. I suppose some of this might come in useful. But the conditions the device is supposed to endure are extreme. And whoever is going to be inside it doesn't want us to get this wrong. He scratches his head. The sigils on his diving suit shiver. Any further assistance you can provide would be greatly appreciated. Accumulate enough experimental modifications to complete the, bar complete the Baroness's equipment. I have three experimental modifications. How many do I need? Ten. Okay, so let's look at how this works. There's a lot here. There's a lot of things I can contribute to increase my experimental modifications. Stained glass, caged catch, that gets me two. Carefully packed creative munitions gives me one. Don't I have a million of those in my bank? Pretty sure I do. Contribute a searing enigma. Fuck no. <laughs> those things are hard to get. It does increase your experimental modifications by seven, though. Condemned experiment. Ooh, I do have six of those, and I haven't needed them for anything so far. I wouldn't mind getting rid of, like, one. Contribute a barrel of unseasoned hours. Oh, I have one? I don't even remember where I got that from. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe that gives you two. Totally worth it, sure. Invigoration. The energetic mechanic pries open the barrel and takes a long breath. Yes, 
I should think we can make use of these. Their Majesty's government gives us a stipend, but there's still never enough hours in the day, is there? An uncanny specimen will give me one experimental modification. I have 21. You can also contribute three. Uh, hmm. That's weird. Usually when you give them more than one at a time, you get some sort of an extra bonus. But not for the uncanny specimen. If you give them one, they give you one experimental modification. If you give them three specimens, they give you three <laughs> experimental modifications. Vision of the Heavens. I have 21 of those. Mm, I have a lot of otherworldly artifacts. But I think it's a condemned experiment that I want to do. I'll do that once. The energetic mechanic's eyes widen and they begin to grin. Goodness. It's been some time since I got my hands on something like this. The mechanic's fingers twitch reflexively. I shall tell Albert to lay out my things and clear my schedule for the next... Uh... Weak. Okay, that's enough to collect the Baroness's mysterious equipment. Thanks to your contributions, the work is complete. The energetic mechanic beams as a group of straining engineers wheel it in. The invention. It looks like a bathysphere. A large globe of iron and bronze wood. Just big enough to hold two people who are prepared to be extremely candid with one another. It has countless layers of plating and reinforcement, and its surface is engraved with luminous sigils. There's an attached crane and a cable. The sigils were my own addition, the mechanic confides. They roughly translate as an inexorable return to the point at which one began. Whatever you're going into, they should increase the odds of getting out again. You have the bathysphere loaded onto your engine. So, they're intending to go inside of a sun? Holy shit. Oh, it's not actually like a physical thing in my hold. It's probably a possession. I was curious if it's something I could equip. Not, I mean, I don't know how that would work. Okay, let's peruse the designs. What have the finest minds in Albion come up with? Pieces the engineers have reluctantly accepted are finished, are stored in this long gallery of steel and glass. Equipment gleams behind glass cases, like exhibits in a technical-minded museum. Take your time, the energetic mechanic says, leaning against a wall. Just let me know if I can be of any assistance. Okay. Twelve, I'm just going to... Take a quick look here, like 12 experimental modifications, 8, 19, 9, 5, 10. There's a lot of things here to get. All right, let's check them out. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I might be able to find some really cool stuff here. Unfortunately, the frustrating thing is I can't actually look at what my ship has equipped right now. So I'm going to have to try to like memorize it. Acquire the Montresor Chamber, a secure chamber for your own private use. Occupies your bridge slot, requires you have at least 50 veils, check, and increases your hold by four and your quarters by four. Ooh, I think that's really good, actually. Um, I'm pretty sure what I have in my bridge slot right now increases my quarters. Yeah. Um. Ah, fuck. All right, let's pop out just right now. I want to check. Is that the bridge? Uh, yeah, but that's because the frickins of red honey. That's not what I normally have there. But yeah, what I normally have there just increases the amount of people I can have, and I'm pretty sure that increases it by at least as much, plus gives me hold space. So, I want that. The Rossetti Cabins. Double reinforced, externally mounted, a blade of crew pods. The Rossetti Cabins occupy your plating slot, Require your hearts is at least 25, check. Increases your armor by 8, and your quarters by 2. Ooh. That's intriguing. So currently my armor, which is the most basic level, and there are much higher levels of armor that give you more health, 
But the current basic level of armor that I have gives me 10. So this is basically converting two of that armor, two of that health, into two quarters. Which is nice for basic armor. But I actually just have enough iron to get the next tier of armor, which I think is going to give me like 20 each. So this is actually going to be pretty poor compared to that. Yeah, no thanks for that. Amniotic crew containment. Oh, I don't like that. Expandable hardened rubbery sacks for your crew to sleep in. Also doubles as hole protection. That is, what the fuck? Is my crew okay with this? Ugh. Um, requires veils is at least 75. Did I get to 75? I don't remember. Hmm. I think I might be going away from that. Um, occupies your plating slot, requires your veils as at least 75, increases your armor by 13, and your quarters by 5. Okay, that's damn good. Yeah, that's that one requires 19, which I can see why, because that's really good. And even if I can't use it now, I'm sure I'll be able to soon, probably during my next level up. So, check, I want that. Check, I want this. Yeah, a lot of the higher tier equipment seems to be... Well, some of it is, of course, just stuff that has better stats, like more hold space or more damage. But also there's a lot of things that, if you pass a skill check, like your veils being high enough for this one, you get kind of dual purpose things, where you sacrifice a little bit of armor for some quarters, but in the end you kind of end up coming out ahead than if you got these two things with separate attachments. The Mighty Pen Defensive Library System. A pneumatic library stuffed by its own rat librarian, armed with many tactical tomes. That's amazing. I want that. Occupies your auxiliary slot. Requires your hearts is at least 25. Check. Increases your armor by 5 and your hold by 4. Hmm. That sounds unique in the fact that it gives you armor in an auxiliary slot. I don't know if anything else has done that, but... Mm. No thanks. I have the ratty baggage handlers, which I think give me like 11 more hold space in an auxiliary slot, and that's just, that's just really good. Mechanical Turk. This mechanical chess player is, in fact, a hoax. It contains a hidden space for a skilled player to sit comfortably within and operate it from within. That might have its own uses, though. Turk occupies your auxiliary slot, requires your veils as at least 25, check, increases your hold by one and your hidden compartments by one. Hmm, that's not very good. I'm surprised though that the Royal Society would be involved in making technology that gives me hidden compartments for smuggling. <laughs> but thank you. But I want that at all. Increases your hold by one as opposed to the ratty baggage handlers, which give me, I think, 11. No. It would allow me to get a higher total number of hidden compartments, which can be pretty important when you get those. Like, the smuggling prospects seem to require you to deliver a much larger amount of things, up to nine in some cases, I think. Which can be a problem because you get that huge bonus if you complete the whole thing, so it really sucks if you don't. So kind of just had a desperation you could use it, but it's not very good. If I had just, you know, experimental modifications to burn, having these in, in the bank, just in case I really needed the hidden compartment slots, I guess wouldn't be bad. The Proserpina Superior Mining and Smelting Array. A reinforced mining array, it's self-maintaining, removing and expelling waste from your hold. It was in the auxiliary slot, requires your veils at least 25, check, and increases your hold by 4. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's a dual purpose tool. It mines and also increases my hold by a little bit. Actually, not really a little bit. 4 is pretty significant. Kind of like the current mining array that I have, which gives me some hidden compartments as well as mining. That's pretty good. Not like something that I really need, but it's pretty good. Carmilla. A forward-mounted cannery that affords the bridge crew an excellent view as your prey's filleted. Fil filleted? It's gotta be filleted, right? 
It's a cannery that is unusually mounted in the bridge slot. Requires your mirrors is at least 25, check, and increases your armor by 5. Hmm. Hmm. I don't think I would want that, because I'm going to get something else that's going to get uh, go into the bridge slot, aren't I? The... Yeah, the Montresor Chamber. Yes. Yeah, that's going to go in the bridge slot, so... No thanks to the other thing. Okay. So, Amniotic Crew Containment, which is super gross. I want that, and I want the Montresor Chamber. Yeah, this is a plating slot. This is a bridge slot. Okay. What can we turn in? What am I willing to part with? I have a good amount of uncanny specimens. I'll give them three. The Royal Society might appreciate them coming in bulk. I can always make use of one as a control variable. The energetic mechanic smiles happily. A set! What fun! He gathers up your specimens and whisks them away. Albert, he calls. It's time! He and your specimens disappear through a reinforced set of doors. To have fun with them. Vision of the Heavens. I got 21. I'll give him a couple. The energetic mechanic lets out an exclamation. I wish I'd been there to see that. They turn away. Come on, lads. Let's get to work. Let's do that a couple times. Let's do it three times. Ooh, is it getting laggy? Kinda. Yeah, it's definitely getting laggy. Otherworldly Artifact, that'll give me two. I have 14 of these. Let's give him a couple of that, too. A rattle, a sudden crack, an unfortunate tinkling. Ah, I'll uh, just put this down over here, shall I? Vigorous Enthusiasm. Do I want to give him another Condemned Experiment? I only have five. So no to that, I think. No to the Searing Enigma, definitely. Um, I could go back to London and I could get just a shit ton of unseasoned hours. Oh, I can even just talk to the energetic mechanic with uh, some dried tea. Hmm. It doesn't even specify how many you get, which I guess means it's variable, probably. Just as you will gain experimental modifications. Alright, let's give him a couple more otherworldly artifacts. I have 12 in total. I don't think I need that much more. Experimental... Actually, wait, no, the amniotic crew things take 19. I do need quite a bit more. Yeah, uh, yeah, some more uncanny specimens. That's fine. You can have a couple more vision of the heavens. That's fine. I want to at least get 19 so I can get the amniotic sacks. <laughs> That's a hell of a sentence. I need to have 19 to get the amniotic sacks. Here we go. Knowledge taken from rods and from chains. The energetic mechanic beams. The things we had to do to understand the design of these. Why, I spent months at the House of Rods and Chains. You would not believe what I saw. The mechanic proceeds to tell you at some length of the transmogrifying arts of the rubbery men. How they can make flesh run like wax and shape bones like spun sugar. Oh, that is fucking gross. Okay, let's just close this so it stops being so insufferably laggy. Please close. I'm just waiting for it to close. <laughs> it's that laggy. The game hung for a second, and now we're good. Let's equip it. Wait, can I equip it right now? Oh, oh, right, right, right. I don't quite have the veils. I'm super close, though. I think I'm one short. Mm, 72. 
Well, I'm not one skill point short, but I am one level up short. I think you get two or three points as your secondary, um, your secondary level up thing. I don't remember. I might be able to use that next level. I wonder if, let me see what I have as far as officers. Anyone going to give me veils? Ah, I made a mistake. I'm actually missing some of my stats because I gave Shoreleaf to the signalman. They were the equipped signaler that I had. So the game just actually didn't auto-equip the other signaler, the Repentant Devil. It just equipped none, which makes sense. So I'm actually entirely missing the stats from the slot, and the Repentant Devil gives me six veils. So, boop, that should do it. Yes. 13 armor and five quarters. Um, yeah, I'll still have space for all the Firkins, even after I change out one of these hidden uh, concealed cavities, but even if I didn't, it wouldn't matter because I'm not going to be going through any place where they're going to check me. So, boop. It's a tier 4 item. It is really, really good. Now, I want the other thing too. Okay, I just gave them a bunch of visions of the heavens and otherworldly artifacts. I think I have five artifacts left. Five or six. And now I have enough to get the Montresor Chamber. It has some corks, the energetic mechanic says, but I'm sure you'll, I'm sure you'll figure them out. The funding, alas, ran out before I could achieve all I wanted. I had hopes of a whole collapsible cellar, but time, money, etc., Tier 3. A habitable reinforced room lined with prematurely aged bronze wood slabs. The model A can only be opened from the outside. The model B only from the inside. Never be disturbed again. <laughs> right, I got the concealed compartment thing here and that's all it does. Don't need the concealed compartment things, so boop. I can fit a lot more people. And a lot more hold. Oh my god, I got 30 slots. That's beautiful. And let's go back here. I've got everything that I want to get, but I saw a question. Yeah, ask the energetic mechanic about their suit. They clank about the arsenal in an old diving suit. It has pistons and chains that were when the mechanic needs reinforcement. It's clearly no longer used for deep Z diving. A lifetime's work. The energetic mechanic gives you a delighted smile. So glad you asked. Yes, I did repurpose it. Did all the work myself. It keeps me warm in the cold and cool when things are a little too warm. Closer examination reveals tiny sigils of fire and of ice, scintillating across the diving suit's surface. For a moment, their tone is rueful. It cost me nearly everything to create. I wasn't sure it would be worth it. But the places I've been able to go, to see? I can travel the wastes where all the stars are dead, or explore the eye of the storm that speaks. That sounds amazing. Can I buy it? <laughs> Obviously no. Can you make, can you, uh, make another one? What are the workshops? That's different from the... Portsmouth Arsenal? Here the Society constructs specialist equipment to further the Society's explorations, London's armaments, and the occasional Sky Captain's adventures. Oh, this is like a whole thing. Oh, hey, the feline eccentric also can take uh, leave here. Advanced, yeah, this is this is a whole nother thing. Um, I'm going to save this for the next episode because this one is already running long. But the Royal Society is an amazing place. Holy crap. It's perfect for me. Because it's just full of all sorts of interesting equipment that I can upgrade with. It's amazing. Alright, well, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to peruse even more designs and weapons and stuff that we might be able to put on our engine.